Hi everybody, it's Sandra. Welcome to my video. Today we're going to have a look at some of my Metropolitan Museum of Art jewelry collection. I got all of these pieces at estate sales, yard sales, or thrift stores. I didn't pay up for anything but for one piece. So very, very often I hear people say that jewelry that's marked MMA is the Museum of Modern Art. That is not correct. That is called MoMA, M-O-M-A. -M -A. That is the Museum of Modern Art. This is the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I believe this museum, well, I know it's on Fifth Avenue. I think it's at 86th Street. I've been there dozens and dozens of times. Thanks for coming, everybody. We're going to have a look at some really beautiful items. I'll be right back. Don't forget to let me know below what your favorites are. And also let me know if you're a big fan of MMA jewelry. So this whole box right here I got at an estate sale. I think I paid either $80 or $90 for the entire box. But what I did right away was I uh, took one piece out that I knew I would get that money for and I sold it. So that I got all my money back just with one piece. Let's have a look. Some of these may not be MMA. I think some may be Alva. Yeah, we'll have a look. I'm not exactly sure. We're going to find out, though. These pieces are so beautifully made. Whoa. We'll take a look at what the mark looks like. There it is. MMA, not the Museum of Modern Art. Metropolitan Museum of Art. I've been to MoMA many, many times, too. I love that museum as well. So the jewelry from MMA is based on either jewelry, you know, very, very old jewelry that they have in their collection or based on famous works of art, paintings, sculptures, things like that. Most of these, I believe, are either 24 karat gold plated or 18 karat gold plate. As you can see, they do make some solid gold pieces, but I don't have any of those. I do have one that's silver, however. This is an awesome... Cupid, I guess. Look at the details. And this one is a really popular one. I've seen this one many, many times. MMA, 1985. That's very pretty. I love that one. Very nice cloisonne. This is definitely one of my favorites. I love this dragon. Look at it from the side. It has some nice height to it. It just looks so much like real gold because it is real gold, you know, plated. There's the MMA cartouche. This one's really wild. I really enjoy wearing this one. I always get a lot of compliments on this one. It's so different. And here's one. This is very beautiful, isn't it? And I think this is MMA, right? Yes. Another really beautiful one. How pretty, those colors. This looks like an ancient piece of jewelry, maybe. And this one. Oh, this one's killer. Look at this. I love wildcat jewelry. And doesn't that look like a real diamond? So, really beautifully done. Just very, very nicely done. Uh, MMA. It says something else under there. Not sure. I can't see it through my lens here. Wow. That's beautiful. Look how ferocious he is. Look at his fangs. And this one, I believe, is not MMA, but I did get it at that same estate sale. I believe this is an Alva. I always love anthropomorphic jewelry. Uh, I love suns, especially, that have human faces. Very whimsical. And I think this says Alva. There it is. Yeah. Alva Museum Des Designs, maybe that says? Not sure. I may have some other Alva pieces. That's another name brand that I really love. So that's the first box. Of course, it's always great to have these original boxes, too. It's just an added plus. I have a lot of the boxes, but, you know, not enough boxes for all the pieces I have. Let's open another box. Let's see what's in this box. 
Oh, yeah. This one's one of my favorites. This one is silver. And it's kind of clever what they've done here because they used the uh, periodic table symbol here, which is AG. See it right there on the bottom? So that stands for silver. I think gold is O on the periodic table, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, this piece is called Clio. There it is, MMA. This is from 1992. And this one is absolutely incredible. It's so colorful. I love the, the stones in it. I guess that's turquoise, right? So beautiful. This one's nice and big too. Very bold. Now this one I got in a little antique store and I can't remember what I paid. This is the one that I did pay up for. Um, I think a couple of other things I did too. But this one, uh, I, I'm not sure like if they knew that AG meant silver. I mean, maybe they did. I'm not, I don't know. But I did pay maybe 60 or $70 for this one. Well worth it to me because I, I love wearing it. And if I wanted to sell it, I'm sure I could get that money back too. That's a good one. Oh, this one's really good. This one's good too because it has its paperwork with it so we can find out who he is. <laughs> he's awesome. He is awesome. Let's see what year he's from. 1994. Nice teeth. <laughs> I like this one a lot. So let's find out the history of this. Warrior with Paddle Club, Panama, 11th to the 16th century. The design of this pin is based on one of a pair of bat-headed warrior figures in a gold pendant intended to be worn as a pectoral. I think everybody knows what a pectoral is, right? The original was found in the Chiriqui region of Panama, but the figures are unquestionably representations in human form of the bat god of Cocal, a neighboring region in the Isthmus. The original was made by the lost wax process in which an exact model or pattern of the object to be cast is mo modeled in wax. This pattern is then covered with clay, leaving an opening through which the wax is later melted out as the molten metal is poured in. This results in an exact facsimile. The museum's pin is cast in pewter and electroplated with 24 karat gold. Well, that's good to know. So this is pewter with 24 karat gold on top. I love this one. That's so awesome. If I can find a picture of the original one from the museum, I'm going to put that on the screen too, and we'll take a look at that. Here's another box. Yes. Okay. I got this one repaired. And as I recall, I paid $20 to get it repaired. Let me see. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Carnelian necklace. Rivet. Yeah. I needed a gold rivet in that. So he charged me $20. It was kind of expensive, I think, to do, but I really wanted to, to do it because I just think this is a beautiful necklace. It's in the original bag. I don't remember where I got this one. I may have gotten this one as part of that jewelry store haul. And uh, yeah, one of these was broken off. So it it wasn't holding on one side. Oh, I, lo I love Carnelian. I truly do. I love this necklace. And it also comes, comes with the matching earrings. Let's take these out. Aren't these pieces fun? I hope you're enjoying this. It's a great way to just unwind, right? Looking at beautiful jewelry. It certainly is for me. Whenever I'm feeling down, that's the first thing I go to is I pull out a box of jewelry and I go through it. Usually sitting on the bed, I get so much enjoyment out of this stuff. I hope you do too. So let's check out the history of this piece right here. Uh, proceeds from the sale of all merchandise are used to support the museum. Yeah, sure. Late Hellenistic Carnelian Jewelry. Jewelry played a prominent role in ancient Greek life, ritual, and death. Artistic representations of daily activities reveal how affluent Greeks used jewelry to display wealth and prestige. Jewelry often passed from generation to generation as family heirlooms. Some of the best preserved examples come from tombs where jewelry was placed on the body of the deceased, though by late Hellenistic times, rich burial goods were less common. The museum's collection includes a perer, which is a matching set. We knew that. Comprising a necklace with earrings of gold and agate. 
All are decorated with large car cabochon garnets. Such fine perures are rare in comparison to material from rich burials in the earlier part of the Hellenistic period. Our elegant jewelry crafted of 24 karat gold overlay with carnelian is adapted from the original late Hellenistic perure. Earrings have gold filled posts. Very cool. I think we should put this on our neck. Let's do it. Now it really comes to life. And here's the earrings too. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love this. I think this was worth the, the $20 to repair. I really do. That's a very elegant set. This one is my favorite. This one is my favorite by a mile. This is insane. It's insane. And it looks so very, very real. Oh, you are beautiful, aren't you? There's the mark. No year on this one. I couldn't get any information on this. I wonder what it's based on. It's in beautiful shape. As I remember, this was at a yard sale or, I, yeah, I think it was a yard sale and there was a lady kind of sitting at a table and she was moving to Florida or something like that. So I, I remember this wasn't that cheap either, like maybe $15 or something, you know, it wasn't a dollar or whatever, like I pay often. Oh, that's a knockout. Wow, wow, wow. It looks so real too, right? Look at the height. That's lovely. Oh, I love this little trumpeting angel. Isn't that pretty? Look at the workmanship. You see how thin this is? And the halo with the faux diamonds. That is beautiful. What does that say? MMA. Oh, I can't, I can't read what that says. That may be the date in Roman numerals. And this comes with its paperwork. So let's find out a little bit more about this beautiful piece. Trumpeting angel pin based on an angel in Madonna and Child with St. John the Evangelist, a donor, and St. Anthony Abbott, circa 1400. I'm going to put that on the screen so we can take a look at the work of art if I'm able to. The charming devotional panel, Madonna and Child with St. John was probably painted for one of the noble families associated with the ducal court of the Visconti family at Milan. The delicate colors, ornate decoration of the gold leaf, the dainty angels, and the lush carpet of plants and flowers at the base of the throne are similar to details found in illuminated manuscripts produced at Visconti court at the end of the 14th century. The panel seems to have had a very interesting early history. Relatively soon after it was painted for a nobleman from Pavia, the face of this man, whose patron saints John the Evangelist and Anthony Abbott are portrayed here, and the original coat of arms at the base of the throne were painted over, probably when the panel came into the possession of a new owner. Sometime after 1452, a strip of printed paper was added to the bottom of the panel that identifies the donor, probably the second owner. Oh, that's all very interesting. A cluster of trumpeting angels hover over the figures in the painting. The museum's trumpeting angel pin is based on one of these angels. The museum's pin is plated with 24 karat gold and decorated with crystals to preserve the finish, avoid contact with perfume and hairspray. Yeah, that is true of all, of all jewelry, of course. That's beautiful. Oh, how delicate. Look at the details in the wings. Before we get to this last box, which has jewelry in it, I want to show you some pieces that I think are very interesting, and I'm not able to get any information on them. If anybody knows, just let me know. But this is a very interesting kind of, uh, I guess, African mask pendant, and it is marked something. I just can't get any information on it. L uh, what does that say? L let me look. It says M-P-N-I-G. And this is from 1980. So I don't know what this is. It seems like it might be a museum piece also. But these next pieces are very interesting. So they are marked EOA. This is something else. I can't figure out what it is. But this is a very cool shield. 
This is a very nice big brooch. This one also seems like it may be gold plated. Uh, yeah, and then this one, this one is cool too. No, I did. I paid up for all of these. I'm not even going to tell you what I paid, but I did. I did pay a bunch for these, and the reason is well because I love these for sure. But it was these figures because I thought, what if these are solid gold? They're very, very heavy. Now they're not solid gold, but she told me that these are in fact museum pieces. I just don't know what they are. The workmanship is unbelievable on them. And I think this one uh, may be unmarked, right? Yeah, I tested it and it is only, you know, gold plated. But isn't that nice? I'm just trying to figure out what it is, you know, who made it and stuff. And here's another one. I got this on the same day. Isn't this nice? I'll stand them all up and we can take a, a better look at them at the end. Yeah, this one has that same mark, E-O-A. Interesting. Very interesting. And then there's one more here, which is just also so very, very beautifully done. The detailing is incredible. Look at the jewelry and stuff. The toes. And uh, I thought this one said EOA too. Maybe it doesn't. But let me stand them up and we'll take a better, a better look at them. Aren't those nice? I bought them to sell, you know, I mean, and, and not only because I was like, oh my God, if these are real gold, that's going to be sick. <laughs> but also I figured somebody really might like to have these. It's a very specific collector who would want these. But they're in near perfect condition. And I just think they're very, very interesting. Do you? I really do. Here's the last box. Now, I think everything in here came from a thrift store. This stuff was like a dollar each. And it, meant, it must have been all the same donation also because I got these all on the same day. Uh, not these. Okay. These I got elsewhere. I can't remember what I had for lunch, but <laughs> I can actually picture the sale I was at where I got this. And there's the Mark MMA, TBM also. I guess these are little flies. That's really cute. But look at this. That's awesome. I guess that's a bumblebee, right? Is that the stripes? Look at the detailing. Look at the feet. And let's see, 1992. Uh, yeah, there it is. MMA. Okay. Now the, the Metropolitan right now, and people also call that the Met for short, uh, they are having a, an exhibition of Tudor stuff, which I am dying to go to. I've got to get to the city. Um, I got to drag my husband in there and we got to go look at that. I love royalty. I love Royal stuff. I love the Tudor King Henry VIII, and they have like some old jewelry and also some old uh, clothing and stuff like that and documents and artwork and all of that. These are very cool too. Look at this. I think these are MMA. Oh, are they not? Maybe they're not. Yep. See, it? it's upside down, but it is there. Those are kind of awesome earrings. And these are also, look at how real these look. See, it says say MMA in there. Look how elegant and pretty are these. Yeah, and there's something else that says, I can't remember now, is that K-H-A-N or something? I know I looked it up at the time. That's some sort of a specific collection, I guess. Those are really pretty. Oh, I love these also. That's very cool. These look like shields, right? Ancient shields. CMA. I was so excited the day I got these. I remember doing a haul on the day that I found all these. I'm just sitting in a thrift store. These are scarabs. I love scarab jewelry. Really neat. And then, oh yes, that's right. So this has the matching necklace. Well, I mean, this is the matching necklace, you know, to these 
earrings right here. Look at the condition. Boy, they really built these to last. So nice. And look at these. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I just said these were really made built to last. And now these are missing some of their gold tone. But these may have been abused, right? Just thrown in a jewelry box and maybe just scraping up against other jewelry. So those aren't really in great condition, unfortunately. But here's the last thing I have. Now, this one is an MFA, which stands for the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, I think. I love this grasshopper. Look at his tongue. I think that's a tongue. Do grasshoppers have tongues? Really adorable. Well, that's it for this time around. I'd like to thank you so much, as always, for coming to my video today. I hope you enjoyed having a look at my Metropolitan Museum of Art Jewelry collection. I'll catch you soon, everybody, okay? Have a great one. Cheers.